All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Health in the Real World podcast. I am Chris Jenke, joined today by a special guest, first timer today. We have Jaquan Newsom. Jaquan, thanks for joining us today. Yes, thanks for having me, Chris. Absolutely, absolutely. Why don't you, um, real quick, just give us an introduction as far as who you are, who you work with, what you do. Yeah, so my name is Quan Newsom. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Um, what I do, I study kinesiology. So I work with a lot of usually busy men that are like business owners or executives, um, typically who are, you know, super busy on their job. You know, everybody's on the grind, but a lot of times that comes with the cost and that costs our health. So I help them kind of reverse that and uh, show up as better leaders in a more productive way, more fit body. That's awesome. What are... Do you find that weight loss is still like one of the main things people come to you or they obviously want energy? They want kind of the whole package, right? Yeah, they want the whole package. But yeah, definitely weight loss is like the, the outcome that they're really looking for at the end of the day. You know, if yeah. they get their energy increase and all that, but if they don't lose the weight, they're going to be. Like, of course. Right, right, right. <laughs> they, yeah, I know. I found that that. um you know, if somebody, I, I specialize in helping people get out of back pain. So people have been doing a lot of sitting, a lot of like kind of tech people. I'm in, uh, you know, Bay Area. So a lot of people sitting neck, back pain. And, um, you know, of course they want to get rid of their back pain. And they also want to get rid of those 10, 15 pounds that they've right. as well. Um, how did you get into it originally? Yeah, originally I got into it because I was actually going to be a, a physical therapist. Oh, nice. And um, I was like, man, you know, do I want to go to PT school yeah. and, you know, spend like 70 grand or I just start my own business? I always was an entrepreneur before I started this, I had like a clothing line. So I oh, decided cool. to, to go this route because most of my family are, are overweight, obese, have high blood pressure. I've seen a lot of deaths through like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, preventative things. So once I started taking care of myself and seeing the impact, I was like, I kind of like this. So, so yeah, I definitely. Uh, have you, over the years of doing this, have you, do you have family members who, are they open to your advice? I've found it's kind of like 50, 50, some of my family members, you know, I've been doing this 20 years and my dad still won't listen. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It's, and the people closest to you, I, I don't know why it's the hardest for them to, you know, listen to you, but I don't really give them advice. I just, you know, I just live freely. And then if they, if they want to live vicariously through me, then you they know. want to ask you questions. You guys, you guys know I'm a trainer, right? I mean, just ask me. Yeah. Yeah. So did you, were you ever overweight, out of shape? Did you go through that phase? I know a lot of us, I think I maybe have had two of those phases over the years before I finally uh, decided to educate myself. Have you gone through anything like that? Yeah. I was never like obese or anything like that. Um, but I work with a lot of people like that, but I was, I was out of shape definitely a lot of times. I never really got into fitness and working out until college. Yeah. Um, so I play sports, but we never like trained. I didn't know anything about working out and like my environment growing up, no one worked out, ate healthy. So and that was all until college. Um, yeah. I was I think I gotta switch some things up around here. <laughs> yeah. yeah and you went did you major in kinesiology or did you yeah, yeah. kinesiology and um psychology. Oh, so, that, well, that's a good combination for helping people with lifestyle changes, too. It's interesting you said you were playing sports, but you were not into fitness because that that um, mm -hmm. that was kind of my experience. And then a couple of the trainers that I hired right after um, when I started growing my business back in like 2010, um, one of them was a great basketball player and he never he was only like 20 years old. He didn't have a six pack and he was playing basketball all the time. Yeah, and then when we we just made. I think I had him do like a green drink, you know, like spinach and avocado and lemon and cucumber, and and within like three weeks he had a six pack, and he's like, I've never had a six pack, and I run all the time. Yeah, um, so I think that's an interesting, uh, you know, because I think it's pretty common. Yeah, it is. I haven't really thought about that, but it's true. Like it's, <laughs> it's weird. Right? Fitness is like intentionally, you know, trying to eat healthy and then actually going to the gym and lifting weights. You know, yeah. just because you play sports doesn't mean you're, you're you know, healthy. healthy or into fitness. You just play a sport for that just, one hour or two, you know. Good point. Good point. Yeah. And you went to um, Arizona State, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. So you, you were born and raised, stayed in Arizona. 
Yeah. Yeah, my whole life. Yeah, I've been in Arizona my whole life. Arizona is one of those states where most people are not from here. Like, if you ever come to Arizona, yeah. it's, everyone's like, when I tell people, oh, yeah, I'm from here, they're like, what? Oh, my God. I've never like, where are you? At? Where are you actually from? No, everyone's from <laughs> California. All the Californians moved to Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're all here. So, yeah. Okay, good, good. Um, okay, so we're going to talk a little bit today uh, specifically about how to lose belly fat. So I was thinking maybe we could do like two or three really practical strategies that somebody can do. You know, um, I know you and I are both big fans of the book um, Atomic Habits. And for any anybody listening who has not read that book, it is phenomenal. Grab the audio book, listen in the car. You know, it's a great. It's very easy to get through. Uh, for me personally, to summarize that book, I would say you know, a couple things stood out. One, only add one new habit at a time. And then two, I really like this, that you, we already all do all these habits. We just, if we want to add a new one, just add the new one to an old one and have them go together. Like there was a story of one guy who every time he took a shower, he cleaned his shower mm -hmm. and that, and, and everybody thought that he was just like this meticulous guy, but really he was kind of lazy and all yeah. he did was link the habits. Right. Mm -hmm. So Coming from that perspective, uh, what? Let's just start with like, what is the first thing that pops in your mind um, as far as being like a really important, easy strategy that people can do to keep a, a relatively low body fat percentage? Yeah. Um, since we're talking about habits, I'm, I'm really big on um, the psychology and the habits of everything as well. Because yeah. on one of the questions I get a lot, like, oh man, how do I lose this belly fat or all that? This is why I promote habits and like the mindset, because even with the best workout plan, the best meal plan, you're not going to sustain that belly fat loss or, you know, for a long period of time, because we're always going to revert back to our habits. So I think the easiest way is to start becoming aware because we always have we have a bunch of habits that we do every single day and we're not really aware of that. So an easy way to do it is to actually start tracking your habits. Like, I think that's a game that's been a game changer for me. That's something you can do like today. And the four habits that I suggest you track um, to start off with is your exercise. Um, and you can use a bunch of apps. I use an app called Habit Share, but there's plenty of other apps that you can use. Mm -hmm. So start tracking your exercise and that can be anything. You, that could be walking, that could be, you know, your exercise, your water, your food intake and your sleep. So if you start tracking all four of those, those are like the four key metrics that's going to help you start losing that body fat and um, reduce it over time. And when you track it, you just become more aware of like what you're doing. And you're like, man, maybe I'm not, you know, and I didn't eat good five days in a row. You know, I didn't work yeah. out like two weeks. Maybe, you know, yeah. So it becomes a game after a while. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we got, so again, exercise, food, water, and sleep. sleep. Nice. Let's go through these one step at a time. Um, I know, you know, everybody's different. Everybody's on a different journey, right? Uh, an easy workout for one person might be very hard for another. But so, you know, because of that, we have to say kind of high level. But let's start with exercise. What what kind of exercise prescriptions do you give to your your clients, your friends, your family, anybody who will listen? Yeah, like you said, everybody's at different levels. So if you're not doing anything, just any type of movement, you know, is good, you know, in general, even if it's just walking, you know, it's better than nothing. Yeah. But um, typically, I like them to do some type of form of resistance training, especially as they're getting older. Um, you know, you teach back pain and a lot of that because we're, we're sitting down a lot. We're not moving. So yeah. we're starting strengthening those muscles. So at least if you could do two days a week of strength training and then the other days, just focus on, you know, walking, doing easy things. But I'd like to build them up to at least three days of resistance training and then two days of some form of cardio but the cardio i like to make it as play and not like pain a lot of people don't keep up with exercise because it's like ah uh, it seems like boring. A yeah, it's so boring. Boring. yeah so try to yeah. think what can i do that's fun like do i like to play pickleball do i like to golf or man yeah I take my kids to the park so you're actually moving and doing exercise but it doesn't seem like it yeah you ever uh you ever read that book um never eat alone I feel like I have a long time ago. I, I, think, familiar, but I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. So it's basically this, this guy, he's like a, he's like a serial marketer and let, this is like one of his habits, right? He's always networking and marketing. He does, you know, even those words networking, 
you know, it, it's, it sounds kind of stale, right? Like, I guess you and I are technically networking right now. I like, I like social media that you can have a human interaction with, right? As opposed to like, you're just sending messages here and there, you know, it's like passing notes in class. Um, so what this guy talks about, and it's a great title, never eat alone. You know, you're going to eat anyway. You're going to, um, you're going to exercise anyway, or you want to, right? We all want to. So he'll fly, you know, if he's going to go fly into town, let's say he's visiting Phoenix, right? He'll contact you. He'll contact all of his other contacts in Phoenix or the greater, you know, Arizona area. And he'll try to, he'll try to figure out where he can fit people in his schedule. So he's like, he's a fan of uh, Barry's boot camp. So he'll get his friend a guest pass for the day for Barry's boot camp and they'll go work out together. And then, you know, then he'll go to lunch with another friend. And then, hmm. so uh, it just, it occurred to me when he was doing that, I'm like, that is the best way to get people to stick to it. Because what do people say, especially about cardio? It's boring. Oh, yeah. right? It's so boring. Um, <clears throat> and, it, and it really is like, you can listen to audiobook. There's so many different things you can do while you are doing cardio that yeah, I think like whatever that. you can pair it with, right. is good. Yeah. Kind of goes back to that, uh, almost like habit stacking, like you're saying, mm -hmm. you know, what can you do while I'm yeah. doing it? Had a exactly. This exactly. He has a walking, the treadmill Peloton. And he's like, yeah, he's like, yesterday I did an hour on the treadmill, but I was watching um some one of his shows on Star. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, oh, uh, yeah. With all, the, with all the streaming services we have, right? We could just be on our phone, like watching a movie, right? We could watch a movie every day. So, okay. So exercise, we got our main four that you talked about. We have exercise, uh, food, water, and sleep. So so your exercise, like kind of simple high level protocol, yes. three resistance days per week. Then you got your two cardios per week, at least two days of rest and relaxation and whatever you want to do. Right. Yeah, for sure. And people overlook the rest and relaxation. I think that's why a lot of people get burnt out when it comes to yeah. losing belly fat. They want it so bad. So they're like, oh, every day I got to do something. 75 hard. Let's go. You know, 75 hard is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, well, those rest days are crucial. Yeah, for sure. It, it, you know, what's so funny as a trainer over the years, I think the number one thing that I've had to do is is convince people that they need to slow down. Because uh -huh. I, I, mean, I used to work at Orange Theory Fitness and um, uh -huh. I don't know if you had much experience mm -hmm. with them, but it's all about it's all about zone training, heart rate zones. Right. Yeah. So, you know, ideally you want to spend a certain amount of time in certain zones. Um, and this is all backed by research that you only need 12 to 20 minutes three times per week at like 83% or higher, only 12 minutes. And so I was trying to convince one of these new clients that came in of it. I'm like, you're going too hard. You got to slow down. Cause he was in this zone for like 42 minutes, 45 minutes. I'm like, you got to slow down. And he was coming every single day. Uh, he's like, I know I got a wedding coming up in three yeah. months. I'm like, All right. <laughs> you're going to be limping down the aisle, but that's yeah. okay. <laughs> And then when the wedding's over, you know, he's going to be so burnt out. He's like, I can't, you know, I already reached the mountaintop. And I'm going back down. Mm -hmm. I don't want to look at another weight for a year. No. I don't want to look at And then when he comes back a year later, he's, you know, probably even worse off. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely sustainable over time. So, okay. So we got our exercise protocol. Uh, water seems pretty easy, right? How, how would you, how would you recommend somebody track water? Um. Well, I track it on the app, you know, just pressing the button, of course. But I try to get at least half of their body weight in ounces. The easiest way to do it is if you have some type of water bottle, I use a hydro flask. Yeah. And I would say for the average person, you can just, if you drink three of those a day, you should be pretty fine on your water intake. Um, okay. They're usually about like 32 ounces. Um, and how I break it down throughout the day is like, if you're working out first thing in the morning, my rule is like, before I, well, before I leave the gym, I got to finish like a whole bottle of water. So I have about an hour to work out, finish the water, and then I fill it up, you know, when I leave the gym, and then it's about 7 a.m., you know, so I have all day to drink, you know, two more bottles of water. So it's a That's lot good. easy if you break it down like that. So by 11 a.m., I'm pretty much done with two and I got 12 hours to drink one more. Um, that's that's a great way to do it and yeah. i like what you do here and and i want to accentuate this because i think people think tracking like oh man i have to go to the app or i have to write it on paper but you are technically actually tracking 
right? When you say, oh, my goal is to consume three of these hydro flasks, that's a, a sort of a way of tracking. So I think that's very valuable. Uh, I like that. So you, you've just set yourself up for success, right? You already drank one by 7 a.m. You work out early, man. You're, so your workout's over at 7? Yeah, typically 6. Yeah, I work out about 5 a.m., sometimes oh, 5.30. So, yeah, go early. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you got so you set yourself up for victory, though. You leave the gym, you're already one-third done with your water consumption for the day. You're probably done with the other one by noon, and then easy, finish another in the next you know couple hours. Yeah, for sure. That's it's right. all about – I think it's all about – <clears throat> systems you know what i mean when it comes to losing belly fat and stuff like that a lot of people set goals and they're like they're so focused on the actual goal yeah. but if you just set up habits and systems the goal is automatically going to happen so i just kind of like set that. up systems in my head then you know you don't really have to think about the goal you're automatically going to get it right and then you're just checking like every day you're, you're kind of just checking the box you're like all right i got my water uh today was a cardio day got that uh, you know, I slept, I slept enough, which is a, the segue for next. Uh, oh no, actually let's go to food first. Let's, let's talk about food. Okay. So there's a lot of debate. All right. We can go. <laughs> we got keto. We uh, got paleo. We got high carb, low carb, high fat, low fat, high protein, <clears throat> you know, the whole thing. What is, what is your, uh, what is your food philosophy? Yeah. So this is my food philosophy. I know a lot of coaches and trainers i've been doing it for 10 years i honestly only know one person who's like super clean he doesn't do it like anything bad but <clears throat> the best what i would say the best meal plan you probably heard this before is the one that you can keep up long term so it's really keto intermittent fasting paleo all that everything is great really what can you actually keep up and sustain so it's so many trends out here now and people want to just hop on a bandwagon but you got to really think about your preferences like me, I'm a pretty simple eater, so if I can keep things simple and clean, I can keep that up for a long time. But yeah, yeah, that's kind of how I think about it. Yeah, I like that. I I think too, it's you know, I did mention keto. This is not necessarily a show just about keto, but um, you know, keto was meant to be a short term thing. So I think one thing that's really important too, um, I I agree. I would say what you just said about whatever you can keep up long term, and then if you want to try things for a little short periods that and you can see how your body responds right. um yeah yeah i'm open to experimenting you know on different things you know yeah. <clears throat> but a lot of times when it comes to we're talking about losing belly fat so i'm trying to stay on that subject people are right. like oh, man i heard about keto i heard about this yeah uh, yeah. The fat. Magic. yeah i want to do this you know but a lot of times they wreck their metabolism because they're <clears throat> super you know under eating on their calories or they're trying to go you know, super hard. It's just unsustainable. So you might yeah. get quick, but that's a good point. What can uh -oh. you do? To I think we're having some. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Let's see if the Chop computer. It. Yeah, there we go. All right. Um, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I think there is so much value in seeing the long-term perspective yeah. and just making these baby habit changes over time. And then, um, Right. You know, making one change, adding one habit and then checking in, you know, seeing how that works for the next month even. And then mm -hmm. coming back to that. OK, do I need to tweak it? Do I need to change direction? OK, so food. All right. Let me recap real quick. So we got exercise. We got the basic three, three resistance training per week. Maybe that's weights. Maybe it's body weight. Maybe you go in the swimming pool. Right. Any of those. Right. Um, right. Uh, two two days right. of cardio. We got water, half your body weight in ounces per day. Uh, a good way to track is just like have a water bottle, give yourself some sort of daily goal. Like I have to consume three of these bottles a day. Yeah. Uh, and the next step was food. Uh, for food, I love that the best diet plan is the one that you can stick to uh, long term. And then let's talk sleep. Sleep is obviously we need to recover. Yeah, it's a big one. It's a big one, actually. A lot of people overlook it. I actually had several clients who've been doing well in their food and their um, workouts, but um, I have a client I'm thinking of now. Like, she goes so hard, you know, on the exercise and the, you know, but she goes 
she works 12 to 15 hours a day. Um, she works out on top of that, you know, and she's trying to eat healthy. But I'm like, you know, the problem is you have to slow down. If you're not sleeping, you're not giving your body recovery. And you're never going to lose the belly fat that you want to actually lose because you're not you're not resting enough. Yeah. You know I mean? Your cortisol levels are going through the roof. Yeah. So yeah. I try to tell people when you're tracking sleep and you're thinking about your habits, you listen to this podcast, think, can I get six to eight hours of sleep? And then if I did good, then give yourself like a green check mark on your habits, you know, but anything less than five to six hours, then you're kind of in a red zone. Yeah. Which if you think about it, I mean, six hours is really, you can go to bed late and wake up early and still get six hours. You know, you can go to bed at, at 11 and still wake up for your 5 a.m. workout. And that's still six hours. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, anyone listening to this thinks that six hours is hard to get. Just think about it in those terms. Like you could be a night owl and an early bird and still get six hours, right? Yeah, that is true. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, I think the key all comes down to a lot of time management and planning. Like those two things are like really key. Um, yeah. So for you, okay, so uh, we got we got kind of our protocol. I like that. That's like a real tight, you know, four main categories. We detailed exercise, water, sleep, or exercise, water, food, and sleep. Um, what do you do personally when you fall off the wagon? Hmm. And then and then is your advice different for clients who fall off the wagon, or is it pretty much the same? You know, I think the biggest. Honestly, I don't fall off the wagon too much because I track. I'm seeing what I'm doing. You're a tracker, yeah, yeah, because I'm tracking. But when I do, a lot of times, maybe if I'm traveling or if I'm doing something, I'm fall off. I don't beat myself up because we yeah. know we kind of treat it. We can treat our lives like as an athlete. You know, we have in season, out of season. So sometimes, you know, like if you have a busy season or your kids got a lot going on or you know you're traveling, yeah. you might not be able to hit it as hard. Just give yourself that grace. Because what happens a lot of times is people beat themselves up because they fell off for a week or two. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, man, I already messed up. And that two weeks or that week, you know, goes into a month or two. So it goes even deeper into the hole. So I think the biggest thing when I fall off, I'm like, ah, you know, ah, I didn't work out for a week or so. Or I didn't, you know, do good this weekend. I'm just going to get right back on, you know. Yeah. So yeah. it's just about getting right back on the train instead of letting it linger. Yeah. I like that's a good that's a good concept where you're you're taking into account kind of what an athlete would think. You know, yeah. the Super Bowl was a few weeks ago. I, you know, the Niners were in the Super Bowl this year, so I was all in it and I watched how they do it and they're focus, focus, focus. And then I guarantee you, next couple weeks, they're not doing anything. You know, they're eating, they're eating a lot. They're not exercising as much, and that I think that's really good advice. And that takes the mental. Uh, mm -hmm. like the judgment off of it, right? It takes the judgment off. And yeah. what I've noticed, and I've done probably 400 podcasts, um, the people who judge themselves are the ones who are not healthy and fit. And all the trainers, all the fitness experts, all the ones who you look at them and go, man, you are lean, you're, you're yeah. athletic. All those people say, nah, don't worry about it. I just get right back. You know, it's no big deal. So, all right. I mean, it, that's, I would say that's good evidence right there to just kind of uh, let it go, right? Yeah, for sure. Yep. And even taking it goes back to those rest days too. You know, I know I'm like, all right, for sure, I'm gonna work out Monday through Friday, sure. um, and then the weekend I can I know I can relax. You know, I mean, I'm yeah. sleep in. You know, I'm gonna yeah. have a you know, better time on the weekend. So, yeah. so it's like I give my time self grace to kind of fall off on the weekends like i'm right right you put but you plan it you're like you're like yeah. dwayne johnson during the week and you're homer simpson on the weekend so yeah but it's planned yeah so. yeah yeah that's planned for sure nice nice okay uh jaquan i want to give you a chance to talk about your uh fit nominal be fit nominal i like that play on words so it's fit and phenomenal fit nominal yeah. uh tell us about tell us about your program how people can find it, how people can get in touch with you if they have any questions going forward. Yes, for sure. So my program, uh, I work with both men and women, but I have a course specifically for men who are, um, you know, busy executives. They're after, you know, 30 years old. And they're probably sitting down a lot for their um, job yeah. and they've kind of gained that weight. So we have a step by step blueprint to help you get there. You can find me and information. I post a lot on YouTube as well. But you can find me on LinkedIn at Jaquan Newsom 
Um, so just look me up on there and then you can book a free uh, fitness audit. We can kind of go through um, what's the best option for you. And I'm just trying to see if did I miss anything? That's where you can find me at. That's where I post at. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm all about. I came up with the name Be Fit Nominal because, like I said, I grew up in an environment where most people in my family are overweight, obese. The mindset wasn't right. And I wanted something different for myself. And I wanted I, it was a speaker. He was always say, like, be phenomenal or be forgotten. And I kind of made a mm. twist out of the words like I was like, I want to be phenomenal because I think everything is related. You know, if you start taking care of your health and wellness um it affects your lifestyle affects your your finances everything so mm -hmm. uh, you can't just be great you know as a dad or you can't be great in a business person but not taking care of your body and right. vice versa so yeah um yeah, 100 yeah so i say be phenomenal just helping people discover their best self through fitness and health yeah yeah i like that and just um on linkedin i'm on your linkedin page just to give people an idea of what type of things you post on your last post was a um a video on the five best standing ab exercises for anyone who's overweight. I like that. Um, quick check in on how people's New Year's resolutions going. Uh, you talked about Atomic Habits, one of the best books you've ever read. Um, not only implement in your daily life, but with clients as well. Let's see. Let me just give you one more. Um, uh, oh man, and then uh, and then your post with Amari Stoudemire. Oh, okay, we got to talk about this. Uh, How did you meet Amari Stoudemire? Uh, well, my wife, she uh, does marketing, like an agency. And um, I guess she was connected with like, some guys who do like Forbes yeah. uh, 30 over 30 or something like that. And they are, they're doing these events for Amari Stoudemire in different cities. And okay. then they started with Phoenix, Arizona. So we got invited to a private event. It was pretty cool. Sons are my team. So it's yeah, cool. lifetime uh, Phoenix resident. So yeah. yeah, he he man, he's an amazing basketball player. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Cool. So yeah, I encourage everyone listening, check out Jaquan's information, YouTube, like you said, you post a lot, LinkedIn, that's where you and I connected. And um, yeah, thank you so much for the conversation. Appreciate it. And uh, any last words of motivation you want to give everybody before we sign off? Um no, I can on my YouTube, on my LinkedIn. If you look at it, it says how you do anything is how you do everything. So if you listen to this podcast, I'm sure Chris gave me some great information. And just think to yourself, like how I do anything is how I do everything. So I don't care if it's sweeping the floor, working out, just try to operate in excellence. And even when no one's looking and start taking care of yourself this year, because I tell clients um, it really doesn't take as long as you think. If you lock in and, you know, start tracking these habits within months you'll see a way different body so you can yeah. do it and i appreciate you having me on yeah absolutely all right thank you everyone for joining us today health in the real world i'm chris janky joined today by jaquan newsom thank you so much and we'll see you guys